Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's talk about timeline preferences in Adobe Premiere Pro CC. If you're using an older version of Premiere Pro, there are no timeline preferences in the preferences. They're kind of scattered throughout. Over time, more and more of these preferences uh, made sense to collect in a category just for the timeline. And that's what we're going to look at now. So in the edit menu on Windows and in the Premiere Pro menu on the Mac, preferences, timeline. Many of these were in other areas. You'll notice this, this part was in a different section. It's pretty easy to understand. Video default transition 30 frames, and you can change this to either different frames or seconds, and it's a sticky setting that will stay there. So this, these are all the defaults. Audio transition is one second, or you could also set that to a certain amount of frames in a still image default duration of five seconds or a certain amount of frames. The still image default's a really good one to remember because if you had to bring in, let's say you were creating a slideshow and you wanted uh, 150 three second duration clips, that's a lot of changes. So if you go into the preferences and change this before you import them, then you've just, uh, trimmed 150 clips while you brought them in. That's a good one to remember. There's a playback auto scrolling, which is set to page scroll. So there are three options, no scroll, page scroll, which is what we have right now, that's the default, or smooth scroll. I'll show you no scroll. So when the timeline, when the, when the playhead gets to the end, I'm just going to zoom in, when the playhead gets to the end, it will move directly off screen. There's no scrolling going on. And when I tap the space bar to stop, it will show up in the middle. So that's no scrolling. Let's go back to our preferences and show you the other option. That's smooth scrolling. And by the way, I'll show you this uh, and come back and change it. Timeline mouse scrolling is set to horizontal and you can change that to vertical. So this is smooth scrolling. The playhead stays in the center and the timeline moves. If I move the playhead over to here, it'll jump to the center and everything will scroll. Some people prefer this method. Um, if they, they're not necessarily looking at moving things around, they want that center view with stuff coming in. Um, and SpeedGrade used to have this kind of uh, feature. All right, let's, oh yeah. So horizontal mode. So if I'm using my scroll wheel on my mouse and scrolling left and right, it's horizontal. If you add the control key on Windows Command on Mac, you will go to vertical mode. And it was same for audio if I had enough tracks down here. So the default is horizontal with command control vertical, but you can change that in the timeline preferences. So I'm gonna go back to my page scroll. And if I choose vertical scroll, now I don't have to use the keyboard modifier. I'm scrolling vertically, and then when I add control or command, I'm scrolling um, horizontally. So it's, it's just the opposite of that. All right, next up is the default audio tracks. So what happens when you put in this specific media? When you put in a mono media track and it creates a new track, it's going to create it based on mono. You can convert this to a stereo file. So when you bring in mono, it's gonna create stereo or 5.1 or adaptive, if it actually um, makes sense for those clips. And it's the same option on each one of these. So mono, stereo, 5.1, and multi-channel mono media. You can have it use that file um, as it brings it in. So by default, Premiere Pro will create tracks based on the clip. I think this is a smart way to go. In the broadcast world, a lot of times there are certain regulations. For instance, everything is mono in some organizations. They don't want adaptive tracks or 5.1 or stereo. Everything is mono or dual mono, and you can change that there. Okay, 
Next up, set focus on the timeline when performing inserts, overwrite, edits. So I'm going to leave this off. And this is my source monitor, and I'm, I'm going to insert or overwrite into the timeline. The focus is this blue line here. When I click on the source monitor, you'll see the focus is on the source monitor. When I click here, it's on the timeline. So I'm going to be focusing here, and I'll insert this into that point. You notice the blue line stays on the source monitor. Same if we overwrite, OK? If you now change this, and, and by the way, what this is really good for is if this is a longer clip and I'm inserting segments in here. So I'll set an in point and an out point, and I'll insert that. I'll hit play, and it's going to play in the source monitor. Hit an out point, in point, out point, and insert. This is terrific if you've got a very long clip in the source monitor and you're chopping it up and sending it over to the timeline. And a great way to do that is the keyboard. Starting, stopping, inserting, in and out points. You don't have to grab the mouse at all. But sometimes people want to shift from the source monitor over to the timeline. So that is an option in the timeline preferences. Set focus to the timeline. Click OK. Let's do the same thing. So now I'm up here, have an in and out point. The blue line is around the source monitor. Insert that over here. Now when I hit play, it's playing in the timeline because it's selected. There's no right or wrong to something like that. It's just whatever your preference is. By default, it's turned off. Let's go back into our timeline preferences. And I'm going to leave that one off. Here's another one. Snap playhead in timeline when snap is enabled. By default, it's turned off. I'm going to turn this on. And you'll see that the, the playhead is snapping because snap is turned on right here. If I turn snap off, it's going to keep playing wherever it is. So with that turned on, now it's going to snap to those edit points. So I'm going to turn that off. I prefer it off. Here's another one that's very useful. At playback and return to the beginning. This is a long time feature that Premiere Pro has had forever. If you have loop turned on and you come to the end of your timeline, it's going to loop back to the beginning of that timeline. So if I hit play, boop, and it goes back to the beginning. If I have loop turned off, so I'll turn loop off and I'll hit play. It stops, but if I hit play again, it will go back to the beginning. So some people that drives them absolutely batty. And, and I've, I, I leave that on almost all the time, but where I turn it off is when I'm, I'm working hard on the end of a clip and I'm going to be playing past that end and accidentally starting and stopping, and then it jumps to the beginning, and that can drive people nuts. I know some people have turned it off and never turn it back on. All right, so I like to leave that on. Uh, display out of sync indicators for unlight clips. Okay, so let's take a clip. Right now, this is linked. If we unlink this, I right click and choose unlink and I move this ahead, you'll see we get indicators showing how far these clips are off. And some people think that doesn't look good. They don't want to see that. So if we go back to our timeline, display out of sync, click OK, and they disappear. Again, there's no right or wrong. Some people will be offsetting clips like that while they're working on them, and they don't want to see those numbers always warning them they're off. Other people want to make sure everything is in sync and clips are not misaligned. So they want to be alerted anytime they look down and see those numbers. Yikes, something's moved. Um, and by the way, you can right click on that and, and it will jump back in. Okay, 
play work area after rendering previews. This is on by default for anyone that's rendering, which by the way, you rarely, if ever, have to render. But the default setting here is when you choose render, it will play that. The one below that says to render the audio at the same time. And by default, audio doesn't normally need to be rendered to play. It can, it can just play uh, with effects applied. Uh, but if you want, you can turn that on. Show clip mismatch warning dialog box. This is on when the clip you're dragging in is different from the timeline. So if you're dragging in a 4K clip into a, uh, an HD timeline, it's going to warn you of that. And if you do a lot of work with, with different kinds of clips, so let's say that you're editing an HD timeline, but you deal with HD, 4K, uh, maybe even SD that you're going to be putting in and, and letterboxing, and you don't want the program to bug you every single time. This is for a more advanced user. Hey, get out of my face. I know what I'm doing, and you can tell it never to, to do that. But again, to some new, new users, they don't want to accidentally edit a whole timeline with the wrong setting, and it's going to alert them uh, with that clip mismatch. So you can leave that on or turn that off. The fit clip dialog opens edit range mismatches. This is for three and four point editing. I've got a tutorial on that. Some people um, don't want the program to tell them when the choices they've made are incorrect. Um, and you can just have uh, Premiere Pro always do one thing or the other, either disregard one of the four points. Just really quickly, I'll show you. Here's an in point. Here's an arbitrary out point. Over here is an in and an out point. And if you're inserting in, in, in this, you'll get this fit clip um, mismatch that's telling you the in point, in and out point here, and the in and out point here don't match. Um, you can say, oh, you know what? Ignore the out point. Always use this option, click OK. And now you never have to worry about the out point. It's going to stick it in and forget the out point. Uh, this again came from user feedback. So if, if you want this, leave it on. If you don't, change it in the preferences. So turn that off and you'll never see that. Then there's a match frame sets in point. I've got a whole tutorial on match frame sets and in point, which is basically an Avid style uh, match frame that uh, Adobe added in the recent version of Premiere Pro CC. All right, there you go. Adobe is consolidating a lot of these different preferences, putting them in one place where it makes sense in the timeline preferences in the latest version of Adobe Premiere Pro CC. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, please take a moment and sub subscribe. If you want to support us some more, you can do that through PayPal. There's a link in the description and in the front of the page. You can uh, donate monthly or you can donate a one-time donation. And thank you, thank you, thank you to all of our wonderful PayPal patrons out there who support us. We love you. Thank you so much. All right. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking your best.